Oh, Muhammad Rasulullah. And so it starts with wa. Pay attention. It's starting with wa. It means and. So keep reading. Wa atasimu bihablillahi jami'a. Hold tight, all of you, to the rope of Allah. How? Jimia! Together. How? Together, together, together. Wallah And don't separate. Don't separate. Is this a danger to us today in this world? Have the Muslims separated? Have we separated from each other? Have we separated from our families? Have we separated from our brothers and sisters in Islam? Have we separated in our masajid across the world today? Have we divided up into groups? And have we come up with different belief systems, even to the extent that some believe that about Allah, but others believe about something else? We have six pillars of faith in Islam that are mandated by Almighty God, that without which, if you have even one missing, it's not Islam anymore. And the first is to believe in Allah. وَمَلَايَكَتِهِ وَكَتُوبِهِ وَرِسُولِهِ وَالْيَوْمُ الْآثَرِ وَقَدْرِتُ اللَّهِ It is to believe in the oneness of Allah and all that goes with that in this could take volumes. To believe in Allah is just a word but whenever you read the volumes you'll understand more. A website we put up for this purpose has made a huge difference in the English language to the people of the West non-Muslims when they saw it. Because in the search engines, when you used to type God space Allah, you would get attack after attack after attack. And they're all still there today, except one. The number one answer comes back from our website, GodAllah.com. And on there you will find what it is we really believe and don't believe about the one Almighty God. And it answers the questions for Muslims, Jews, Christians, Hindus, Buddhists, whoever wants to look and understand it's there. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. The next thing. We believe in the angels. Okay, you say you believe in angels. What do you believe about angels? Well, number one, you can't see them. They're made from light. Along the way, it's not mentioned in the belief system, but when you go into details, you find right away the belief in the jinn, and they're made from a smokeless fire. We believe in the books. How do we believe in the books? I, I'm surprised how many Muslims send me emails asking me about the Bible because they want to study the Bible. They said, well, we believe in it, so we should learn it. I said, what? What? Who is teaching you Islam? There isn't anything left of the Bible on the planet. What you're reading is translations of mistakes that people thought about a book that they're not even sure exists. The names Matthew, Mark, Luke, the first three synoptic gospels, these are made up hundred years after Jesus was gone. The books were there with a letter on them, but they want to make it more personal, so they came up with these names. That's a fact. So how are you going to go in here and you're going to say, well, maybe this, maybe that, something else, and you don't even know the Quran yet. You haven't even memorized the Quran and you're going to talk about somebody else's books. And they're definitely not the books that we're believing in. We're believing in the original books that came from Allah to those prophets for their time. Period. Best. Finish. Halas. Don't go there. Of course we believe in the last book. Do you want to know what the Bible said? Read the Quran. Allah tells you what He revealed for the people before. And it's in their language. You don't even have to think about it. There. That, that's what Allah said. He said that. He said this. He said that. You want to know? There it is. And you don't need to argue with these people about a book that doesn't exist. Tell them what you have, not what they don't have. Let them figure it out. Remember, it's their choice. What's the next thing? We believe in the messengers. What do we believe about them? Now that much I'm sure you know. We believe that all the messengers of Allah were the highest of people of their times, the best examples that there were for the community, and at the same time, they were not God. None of our prophets were God or had gods inside of them or were so close to God that they were turning into light or anything else. 
They were human beings like you and I. They ate food. They went to the bathroom. They made normal mistakes just like you and I. They just didn't make the big mistakes. And we believe in the resurrection that you will be brought back in a full body. A body. You know, flesh, bones, eyes, nose, mouth, ears. You'll have everything when you're brought back on the day of judgment. And that same body is what's going to testify against you on the day of judgment. You know what he made me do? And the body's going to tell it all. The prosecuting attorney in your case in court on the day of judgment is you, your body. Don't forget that. Then, this one is the problem. And the Prophet ﷺ told us this was going to be the problem. In the last days, we find that's exactly true, the Qadr of Allah. As he predicted, it has happened. Muslims argue about this subject maybe more than anything else. Even some so-called scholars, so-called wannabe presenters of Islam, have made big mistakes in this area, the Qadr of Allah. I can give you a whole khutbah on this subject because comparing from the Greeks and Romans and what they said, the Jews, what they said, Christians, what they're saying today, and then of course what Islam teaches, you'd be surprised. A whole world of misbelief comes out of misunderstanding the Qadr of Allah. Everything with Allah is already a done deal. It is already written. It will happen. Nothing you and I are going to do to change what Allah wants to happen. Nothing. Now, get one little thing in your head so you understand this. If something was coming to you that was bad, really bad, but you made a dua or you did some good deed, then it would be diverted away from you. We understand that. How do we understand it? We understand that Allah already knew all of that before it ever happened. You didn't know. In fact, we don't know half of what's going around us, but Allah knows all of it. So all of it is known to Allah. Even that you were so bad that you almost went to hell, a'udhu billah, but then at the last minute you did those deeds of righteousness, Allah saved you. And you can say, wow, just because of this or that, but Allah already knew it. That's the qadr. Allah knows, simple sentence, Allah knows and you don't. These points are very critical because this is where shaitan comes to confuse the believers and it's one of the places that Muslims begin to divide up or actually they use it as an excuse to divide because they wanted to divide up anyway. Ego, the nafs of the individual, of the believer, is his biggest problem. Yes or no? Now, the biggest enemy, enemy of all of the enemies that we have is who? Ourself. Shaitan is for sure the instigator and he'll do everything he can to help you make the wrong decision. But the bottom line is you made the decision. Shaitan never forced anybody. Never. You made the choice. He made it attractive, you bought it. So we can't blame him or anybody else, just ourselves. The idea of the Muslims dividing up, and this has happened, this has already happened. Brothers and sisters, listen carefully. Our Prophet wasallam, was a real prophet of the real God with a real message. It's not bogus. It's not a joke. It is clear. How could any man stand in front of his congregation 1400 years ago and tell you exactly what would happen unless he was a true prophet? Especially when he tells you the negative things that you will do. And we're doing it. Because if he was a real salesman trying to sell something he made up, he will tell you, yeah, just get my religion, it'll be easy. Allah said in the Quran, no, it won't be easy. When people come into Islam, Allah said, do the human beings think they'll be left alone on saying we believe and they won't be put into a great fitna? Just like the people before them were put into the great fitna by Allah. 
so that we will see who are the ones doing the truth and who are the liars. And yet Allah already knows that too. Mm. So he didn't promise it was going to be easy. And then it continues telling us in Islam in the last day exactly how we would be. A good salesman would tell you, yeah, and at the end it'll be so nice and rosy. Everybody will be, you know, having love for each other. The lion will lay down with the lamb and it's going to be so easy. Do you see anything like that today? Huh? No. That's Christianity that promised me that. Now, after Isa a.s. comes, yes, that's known, but that hasn't happened yet. This, our point about Islam tomorrow, the future of Muslims today, is understood here real clear with a hadith. The Prophet wasallam said, as the Yahudi, the Jews, one Nasari, the Christians, have divided Faraqa into 71 or 72 sects or groups. You Muslims, you're going to divide into 73. The meaning from the Arabic idiom here isn't by numbers. It's by meaning no matter how much the Jews divide, Christians will divide more. No matter how much the Christians divide, the Muslims will divide more. So don't worry about counting how many groups there are on the earth today. Some brothers are doing that. Oh, it's seven.